Uh, since uh, 35 years, my focus of my research, of the genetic research, is on early onset dementia. In Alzheimer's disease, uh, there are three genes, the APP gene, presenilin 1 and presenilin 2, that have been found by genetic studies in very large pedigrees. Unfortunately, after a while, there was a perception that all the genetics of early onset Alzheimer's patients was solved. There was nothing to do anymore. And they moved to statistical genetics in late onset dementia. On the other hand, we know from our studies that at least 95% of the early onset dementia patients are not explained at the genetic level. So I have continued to work trying to find other genes. We have most recently identified uh, uh, new genes. Uh, those new genes are now currently being explored at, towards their contribution to the disease. So there is still a lot of families to explain. You can wonder whether this is worth doing. And I think it is worth doing, first of all, for the families, families that are unexplained by a mutation in any of the three known genes, they also want to know the genetic uh, cause in their families. And I think they have the right to know. So spending that time in research is, is relevant to the patients and the families, but it is also relevant for the scientists. Because what you can expect that the genes that you're going to identify in those families are genes that are going to give information on the disease process as well. And not necessarily fitting into the hypothesis of the amyloid cascade, putting amyloid at the center of the disease process. It is possible that those genes might actually point to aging processes, uh, it might actually also point to other disease processes that are also leading, leading to clinical Alzheimer's disease. And it turns out to be the case. What we have presented here at the meeting is uh, an data coming from a gene that uh, is called ABCA7. It's a gene that was initially identified in a statistical genetic study, what we call GWAS where you actually look at markers over the, the whole uh, genome and you try to associate this with the disease, in this case late onset Alzheimer's disease, and if you find an association, then you can look in that area of the genome for the, for the genes. And ABCS7 is, is identified as a late onset Alzheimer's disease, at least as a risk gene, meaning that it contributes together with many other genes to late onset disease. It can change onset age, it can be a bit earlier, it can be a bit later. So we looked at that gene and what we did, we actually screened it in, in a cohort in a group of patients with early onset Alzheimer's disease and a group of families. And it turns out that it's, it explains the 3% uh, of the familial Alzheimer patients uh, families that had not been uh, uh, explored before, 3%, which is actually the sum of the percentage of mutations that you find in APP, presenilin 1 and presenilin 2. So to me, this is now the major gene for Alzheimer's disease. It turns out that if you look at the clinics and at the pathology, it's a very, very classical Alzheimer patient. And what is even more important, in a way of speaking, if you take all the patients together, all the patients from early onset up to late onset, the average onset age is around 70 years. And for many years, we have noticed, and it has been reported, that there are patients in the 65 plus group, which is supposedly late onset, in the 65 plus group that uh, reported over and over that there was a familial component. And most of those patients we can now explain by this gene. Right? So it has a benefit for early onset and a benefit for late onset in terms of explaining the missing genetic etiology. In early onset, we can use it for diagnosis, of course, and genetic testing. Uh, the uh, mutations that we find are different between early onset and late onset in the sense that those that we find in early onset dementia are causal mutations, while the other ones in late onset are risk alleles. And so this is over the whole continuum. And I think this is one of the major genetic findings. Uh, that's also been presented at this meeting by two of my PhD students.